<laughs> but during our memorial weekend stay on the Hillsburg land, things heated up, put mildly. Willem is a randy, gentle, utterly inexperienced adolescent male soul. Cayenne does not have an estrus hormone in her body, but let us not forget those very much present adrenal cortices pumping out so-called androgens that get lots of the credit for juicing up mammalian desire in males and females. She is, however, one turned on little bitch with Willem, and he's interested. She does not do this with any other dog, intact or not. None of their sexual play has anything to do with remotely functional heterosexual mating behavior. No efforts of Willem to mount, no presenting of an attractive female backside, not much genital sniffing, no whining and pacing, none of all that reproductive stuff. No, here we have pure polymorphous perversity that is so dear to the hearts of all of us who came of age in the 1960s reading Norman O'Brown. The 110-pound Willem lies down with a bright look in his eye. Cayenne, weighing in at 35 pounds, looks positively crazed as she straddles her genital area on top of his head, her nose pointed toward his tail, presses down, and wags her backside hard. <laughs> I mean, hard and fast. He tries for all he's worth to get his tongue on her genitals, which inevitably dislodges her from the top of his head. It looks a bit like a rodeo, with her riding bronco and staying on as long as possible. They have slightly different goals in the game, but they are both committed to the activity. Sure looks like, um, sure looks like Eros to me, definitely not Agape. They keep this up for about three minutes to the exclusion of any other activity. Then they go back to it for another round and another. Susan's in my laughing, whether raucous or discreet, does not merit their attention. Cayenne growls like a female Klingon during the activity, teeth bared. Remember how many times the half Klingon Belana Torres on Star Trek Voyager put her human flyboy lover, Tom Paris, in sickbay? <laughs> Cayenne's playing, but oh my, what a game. Willem is earnestly intent. He is not a Klingon, but what feminists of my generation would call a considerate lover. <laughs> Their youth and vitality make a mockery of reproductive heterosexual hegemony, as well as of abstinence promoting gonadectomies. Now I, of all people, who have written infamous books about how we Western humans project our social orders and desires onto animals without scruple, should know better than to see confirmation of Brown's love's body in my spade Aussie dynamo and Susan's talented landscape guardian dog with that big sloppy velvety tongue. Still, what else could be going on? Hint, this is not a game of fetch or chase. No, this is ontological choreography, which is that vital sort of play that the participants invent out of the histories of body and mind they inherit, and that they rework into the fleshly verbs that make them who they are. They invented this game, this game remodels them. Metaplasm is the name of the trope. Metaplasm, once again. It always comes back to the biological flavor of the important words. The word is made flesh in mortal nature cultures. Thank you. You know, let me start with my own comment, my reaction to it. When I started my philosophy in the 70s, I was one of the first philosophers who takes the ecological question seriously as a philosophical question, not a question of science or anything like that. But in the meantime, because the ecological crisis didn't really happen, or it's now more out of sight than ever, I got kind of tired and I started to focus more on humanity, what does it mean to be human? And you told me yesterday you started this and today I got another uh, brainwashing and now I, I have, to, <laughs> have to consider to reintroduce in my philosophy the mitgetier, the animal with. Uh, we are not uh, like to live. Only because, you know, we always ask this question, uh, why do we need the other? Which Baudrillard answered, in order not to bore ourselves to death. <laughs> Perhaps simply in order to be. Yeah, okay, but this is, living means not to be bored, that I would uh, suggest, it's not just living, you have to live in an exciting way, certainly, <laughs> right? And, but as we know, the other, uh, other humans have a limited possibility. Mm -hmm. 
bore us after a while. Also, so now thanks to you, there's another university of people coming, animals coming. We can we can make our life more pleasurable, more learnable, maybe also more painful. That's all fine, but at least not boring. So in this way, I would say, looking forward into a world which certainly will come in which we don't have to work anymore for our living, but have the right to have a profession we like, to be with other animals, will be in many ways probably one of the most exciting professions we can find. Reasons to live for and have a fulfilled life. And that is what you actually kind of told us, that they are waiting from the history coming to us. As Heidegger said, they are coming to us from the past, but we see them in the future. Right? Mm -hmm. As they coming back from the future <laughs> to us and, and telling us here, nicht, you don't have to fear, and, with, with, and there is no work anymore, nicht, this pain, but also fills our days. You know, that you kind of have an empty space. No, it's not empty. There are all the dogs and, and you know, you can play with and they play with you and not only play, she told us how serious it has become. What was this game? The game of agility. Agility, right. Is that not agility? That is a new <laughs> philosophical term. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will steal it from you, you know. Agility is a philosophical <laughs> term in, in, in which we can nicht, describe activity. Uh, nicht? It would be nice if he still would be very agile, agile whatever it is. Agile? Is it agile? <laughs> whatever. Well, uh, that is my, my comment. I don't... I keep waiting for the other ship. I, ha I have... <laughs> no, I have not even... I don't... Um, otherwise, because challenging you would try to erase what I learned. And that I don't want to do yet. So I may wait <laughs> until you come back before I uh, find what... Uh, what I, yeah, what you miss, but I, but I don't think you miss something because you are not coming and saying the animals are our salvation or that no, not anything not. like that. But they are the companion we have overlooked. We are always uh, clear that the and part of making us who we are and have been yes. for a long time. Dogs are only one instance of a much bigger story. They're an important instance and want to happen to be focused on, but they and they are they are the, the story is there. The story in itself deserves attention, but it also is an instance of a story field of, the, of what makes us human is a ontologically heterogeneous and deep history of relationality with, or, with many other entities, human and non-human. Uh, not all organic, but many are, plant and animal, and microbiological, and machinic, technical and not. Uh, that, that it is, it's the story of co heterogeneous, ontologically heterogeneous, co-constitutivity over many different kinds of time scales. That's the heavy burden this 35-pound Australian Shepherd has to bear. Okay, okay. Now I, I now I have a critical question. So, <laughs> that is a question. If, if I, I leave dogs, I'm in deep trouble. No, if, I, if I would be like you by touching something your case a dog, at that moment I kind of inherit all the history, all the layers. Yeah. You know, this sounds really like a, a paranoid character to me. That, look, if I do this with, with a table or a, with, no, with her, oh, then I get so much in, in trouble. Because all the time, everything, everything is, is it not our, our strength not to know about that. We as a whole know about it as an impact, so if we want, we can focus on it. But in the moment, we just love the dog, you know. And love the dog is our intuitive way to, to interact with it. Without the burden of knowledge, which is also not only a burden, but also confusing and maybe misleading, that are kind of distracts us from the interaction which the animal allows us and uh, challenges us to, uh, to do. So in some part, I'm going, touching the dog, and I want not know anything. Whoops, it's not you, it's the history of the conquest. <laughs> <laughs> That's our problem. Right. <laughs> but I understand, but it, what you mean is certainly if you focus, then you need all that you can know, but it's the interaction to actually act. I, I, I would go a little further.